today what we're up to here is replacing a radiator fan and thermostat on a 2010 Volvo V70. Um, what happened to me was I was on the highway bumper to bumper traffic and all of a sudden I got a yellow light saying slow down engine overheating and about 20 seconds later I got a red light saying stop immediately engine overheating or some message along those lines. I got home or I immediately got out of the car left the engine running just momentarily to see if I could tell if the fan was on or off and the fan was in fact off and so um, I was able to make it home by turning the heat on to max and having everyone in the car boil and I turned the AC off and basically used the heater matrix as a reverse radiator or reverse cooling system for the engine. That got us home without any further issues. I have then got Vita hooked up and tried operating the fan and the fan would come on but it was noisy at times. Um, that that and given the fact that it was not on even though the air was on when I was driving previously suggested to me that I should replace the fan. I've seen other instances of fan failure. It might have been just the control module of the fan but honestly I just decided to get the whole fan from Volvo and given that it did briefly overheat I figured the engine's got 245,000 kilometers on it. I thought I probably should replace the thermostat in behind the intake manifold there at the same time. I'm going to start by draining the fluid, the coolant fluid. If you're replacing your thermostat, you've got to drain the fluid. On a, on a V70 and XC70 P3, the, the pedicock is located on the uh, left-hand side, driver's side of the car, and there's an orifice that uh, let's out the coolant sideways, so I've got a little bit of silicon hose here that I'm going to connect because I want to reuse my coolant. I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to direct the coolant into a bottle. So I just have to turn the pedicock. Got a water jug underneath. Let's see if I can do this without spilling too much fluid. Plastic, so it should if you turn it enough. There you go. It's coming. All right. So I've got I've got the coolant draining, and to help, so you can see there. I've got the coolant draining, and to help the coolant drain a little bit more quickly, I want to take the cap off the reservoir. And it'll fill up more than one container, so you really have to keep an eye on it. So the next thing I did was take the air box out. You basically can just lift it out, but you've got to make sure you unplug the harness. And then this intake pipe, what you do is you get under the car, loosen the bottom end, it's a 7mm clamp, loosen the top end, another 7mm clamp, and you can just pull it out all together. So that's out as well. And that gives you a little bit more working space in front of the fan. Okay, let's cut this one tie wrap here. and this 10 millimeter clamp right here. Doesn't give you much more room. Why don't we loosen 
we're going to loosen this one as well. Take this off too, give it a little bit more room. There we go. And that allows you to wiggle that all over the place. Good. So all I've done now is there are two clamps here. Just put a screwdriver in and pry the clamp away from the plastic connection, both sides. And then the radiator's loose. So I may be able to take this out. Since Okay, so I wiggled it a little bit, and there's another video on YouTube that says you can loosen the transmission cooler retaining bolt at the top to make some room, so I may do that. So T30, I think, right there. But I've drained the coolant, so I'm just going to take this hose off. Right there. And uh, so that you just pull up on that clip, and the hose itself should release. And yes, it did just release after you pulled that clip. So that's it. Does that give me more room? A little bit. Uh, so what I did was I, I pushed the bottom of it towards the car on this side, which allowed me to lift it above that little, that solid line down there. And then once I did that, I was able to lift the other side. So the fan is on cooling hose that I disconnected, which really made a difference. So that's the rest of it right there because I drained the coolant, I had that option. All the footage I took, so feel free to give me a thumbs down on this one, but I didn't want to waste the footage I did take. So in summary, to take the radiator fan out, it's easiest if you drain the coolant disconnect this hose here and that and you don't need to loosen the transmission cooler uh, but you will need to push the bottom edge of the radiator fan inwards towards the car on both sides and that'll allow you to get past some of those tighter spots and then you know manhandle it out I took no footage whatsoever unfortunately of the replacement of the thermostat. So that's unfortunate. I'm sorry about that. My phone ran out of power. Some will tell you to replace the thermostat. You need to re remove the intake. That's total BS. You do not need to do that at all. To get access to the thermostat, one, take your headlight out. So two clips, one, two, pull the headlight out, disconnect the harness. Take your power steering reservoir, pull it out, and push it. Pull it out, push it into the opening where the headlight usually sits. And that gives you nice access for your hands to come in and one, disconnect the, um, the cooling hose. It's the same kind of fitting as the one up here. So you need to pull it and then push and pull out, or pull on the clip, then pull out. Then it's a matter of just accessing each of the, I think they're T30 bolts. So you can, you can sort of see it in behind there, obviously take your, take the dipstick out. Uh, you can see it in behind there. Those are the bolts there. One, two, and then the third is on the bottom passenger side, which is easy to access. And the last one is driver's side bottom. That one's tougher to access, so I would suggest you, um, Taking it out is not a big deal, but to put it back in, use some electric tape, tape the tape the bolt to the um, to the socket so you get it back in without too much of an issue. But it might be a little bit frustrating, but by no means is it um, anywhere the work required 
if you remove the intake. So do not remove the intake to replace that thermostat. For what it's worth, my thermostat, when I took it out, the innards kind of fell apart. I would say at 255 or whatever mileage I'm at, 255,000 kilometers, replace the thermostat uh, in that range of mileage because it, it did disintegrate. The, the, almost the entire thermostat assembly is in this strange plastic material and it does suffer abuse from heat, etc. So it was due for a change. Um, and it's super simple to replace. I went with an original Volvo part. It was expensive, but um, not not terribly expensive. So that's it for that. And then it's just a matter of you know plugging plugging the, the module back in for the uh, radiator fan, um, re reconnecting the uh, the tie rack here, which I did not do. I had some tr problems when I tried to reinstall this dumb bolt. I broke it, so I still have to go to the rec yard to fix that. And don't forget to uh, reconnect the the other fitting in behind under the, the air the air box. Then you just put the air box back on and refill it with coolant, and you're you're good to go. Hope that's helpful. I'm sorry I didn't take the rest of the footage, uh, but um, as I said, I hope some of this is helpful. Thanks. Bye.